Hey everyone. So in this video, we are going to learn about Kafka. Have you ever wondered whenever you click on a particular product and being clicking it on an iPhone or anything on Amazon, you similarly get instantaneously get uh, suggestions related to it. For example, if you click on iPhone, you will get suggestions related to airport. How does it happen so quickly? So, or have you ever wanted to learn about Kafka? Have you ever wanted to learn about message queues because you are tired of the polling architecture? So if, if it is so, I think this video is for you. So what we will do in this video, we'll first learn why we need Kafka, how it gives real time recommendation and all those things. And then we'll learn a little bit about the publisher subscriber pattern, uh, which is the uh, pattern behind all of modern microservices architecture. And then we'll learn a little bit in depth about Kafka's architecture like topics, publishers, consumers, and all those things. And then we'll see Kafka brokers and clusters and how they scale. And then I will tell you why Kafka is so fast. There are basically two principles which we'll see in detail. And at the end, we will set up Kafka in our local machine using a Docker container. And then we'll do a hands-on project using uh, Kafka where we'll have two microservices, one publisher, one consumers. And in between there will be Kafka and the publisher will write a message to the Kafka queue and the consumer will pick up that message and start consuming to it. So lots to learn. Let's get started. Yeah, so we live in a system that is extremely data driven. Everything we do creates and creates a lot of data. For example, whenever you open Instagram, you're scrolling Instagram, you and you like a post. So when you like a post, it creates a data that you have liked this post. And it is a data and each data has a story to tell. For example, here you liking the post tells you, tells Instagram that you like this particular artist or you like this particular genre of artists. So it tells Instagram to suggest you feed rele relevant to the post you have liked. So every data that we generate has a story to tell and it is very important for us to act on the data that is generated in the data driven world that we live in. For example, why it is important to act on us fast. I can give you an example. For example, in, uh, in Amazon, you must have seen that this kind of uh, recommendation page where it shows you top picks for you and it is based on the shopping history of your the kind of things you have bought in the past so for example you buy an iphone today okay and the recommendation engine of amazon is not very good let's say uh, so you have bought an iphone you already spent a lot of money so you what you will do you will your natural instinct will be to buy a cheaper headphone so on the day you buy an iphone uh, you also bought a cheaper headphone but if amazon was able to recognize that you are buying an iphone it should automatically uh, suggest you to buy an AirPod with it because it works better with the Apple ecosystem. So when you are buying an iPhone, if Amazon is not able to provide you the suggestion at that very moment of time, it is a loss for Apple because uh, you buy an iPhone today and uh, uh, Amazon suggesting you an AirPod maybe to five days later does wouldn't make sense if you've already ordered an headphone. So it is important for Apple that Amazon suggests you this AirPods the very moment you start buying an iPhone. Otherwise you could easily buy an, another cheaper product or any other product. So it is very important for us to work on the data that is created to listen to the story our data has to tell and act on it very responsibly. So it is, this is what I was telling. There is a data creation and there is a data analysis. And we need to make the, we need to make this process of moving the data between data creation and data analysis very fast. So how we move data is becomes as important as data itself, which I illustrated how uh, moving the data fast of you buying an iPhone becomes very important for you to suggest an airport at that very instant of time. So this is very important. And this is what primarily Kafka solves. This is one of the main job of Kafka is to handle event driven communications. What is it? We will understand later. But if I scroll up, you will see uh, this is a screenshot I've taken from Apache Kafka's website. So you will see that around 80% of all Fortune 100 companies trust and use Kafka. So if you are looking to get into a MNC or if you are looking to get into a company, uh, around 80% of the time you will find they're using Kafka. So it is a very important skill set to have, I would say. 
and which is what I would like to do in this video. I would like to give you a glance, glance of Kafka and do a crash course. Okay, so now that we have understood that learning Kafka is very important and one of the major things that it solves is moving data. But this is not the only thing it solves. It also solves other things like it serves as a message queue and all those things. We will try to dive deep into Kafka now. Okay, so one of the major use cases why Kafka is used uh, is its use case as a message broker. So why do you need a message broker or a message queue and what is its purpose? We'll try to understand. So let's say you have a merchant shop and you sell saris or anything. Let's say you have a merchant shop of clothes and a client orders that uh, you should that she wants a sari of this particular model and this these things. So first thing you will do, you will check in the inventory that if uh, if the order is still valid, like if the sari is not sold out, and check if the sari of that model is available of that size. And once the inventory returns with yes, uh, you will make a call to the payment system that uh, this particular sari exists, and the payment system can initiate a uh, uh, payment payment gateway with the client and the client can pay for it and once the payment is completed you can go in back into the inventory system and subtract that particular quantity of the sari and then you can or make and then you can make a call to the call to your shipment service that this particular model of sari this many number of pieces needs to be delivered uh, to this address to the client so this is one part of the system and there will be another part as well uh, the inventory updater part where the shopkeepers will keep updating that this many number of clothes has come into the inventory and, and the inventory will keep getting updated with this so this is the scenario but this scenario is not fail proof everything in this case has to be a transaction for the entire order to succeed for example when you order a study and i deduct and i first check that this study exists and I make a call to the payment system to make uh, to make a call to the client that uh, you make this payment. So once you have done the payment, I should ensure that the inventory is still not stale. So once this order is received, once your payment is done, the shipment should also happen, right? Because if I do the payment and the shipment system fails, it is a failure on your part. So this entire thing should be a transaction. And there is a flaw in this design. So I am waiting for things to complete on my behalf. So I understand that this part should be a transaction, but not everything has to be a transaction. So I am whenever I am checking the inventory, I am waiting for the inventory to return something. Whenever I am making the payment, I am like waiting for the payment system to return a yes. And till that time, I am just waiting. So and the same for the shipment system. So consider the case when any of the system goes out, like the shipment system goes out. If the shipment system goes out and the payment still goes through, so that will be a very bad name or reputation for our merchant shop. So that is one thing. And there is a there is a lot of waiting, which we need to avoid. And consider the case when this entire thing grows. For example, the case comes uh, that we need to check the that we need to check the health of each particular system so we will write a health check container but this health check container will do it will basically keep polling uh, every system and check uh, if it is healthy or not for example it needs to check if the shipment system is currently up and running if it is not up and running we need to take action because it is a very important system so this will have connection to all these particular resources and very soon this communication will get messy every particular container will get pinged from multiple different containers and this way of communicating becomes very messy very soon so there is a is there a better way to do it of course there is and how can we do it we can do it by message queue so let's say so how does a message queue solve this problem solves this problem so let's say you have multiple uh, microservices so i'll change the color here so this is let's say your microservice one let's make the font also large let's say this is your service one and you have another service microservice two and you will have another service microservice three Okay, so you have three services now how these services can communicate with each other instead so initially what was happening was each of the services was pinging each other so m1 will put ping m2 and then if it receives a response yes 
then it would then go ahead and ping m3 if it receives a response yes then maybe there is another service m4 so it would go and tell m4 to do its uh, m4 to do its job so every service was dependent on the another, another service so there is a lot of coupling that is going on here so if one of the service fails it would fail our entire system which is very bad so what instead we can do we can introduce a message queue so what the message queue would do uh, let me bring the queue down here yeah. so what the message queue would do so let's say m1 has to communicate to uh, let's m1 has a particular job so once its job is done it can write its message in this queue and any of the any of the services that is concerned with this message can listen for the message let's say m4 has to do something with this message so m4 will consume this message and do things with it m2 and m3 doesn't have to care so this frees up a lot of space Similarly, M2 can send a message in the queue and then M4 can receive to it, subscribe to it and listen to it. So this is the purpose of a message queue. The purpose of a message queue is to make this entire communication event driven. Everything happens in response to an event. Nothing is polling based. So I am not constantly polling M2 for a response. M2 will respond to the, whenever a particular message will come into the picture or whenever an event will happen. So this is a much better architecture than the previous one we saw here. So this is how a message queue helps you to make your communication async, makes everything little less messy. And we will understand uh, Kafka as a message queue now and we'll get into the term terminologies of Kafka. So in its essence, Kafka is a message streaming platform. So what it does is basically moves data from one place to another. It provides more capabilities like for example when it is moving data from here to here, it can it provides you the facility to filter out some data or do some data processing in between. But those are later parts. In its essence, Kafka is a message queue. So what, what is the most important thing for, for being a message queue is a message. So messages in Kafka are messages in Kafka are sent without any understanding of a message to Kafka. So Kafka doesn't care about this message. This message is just an array of bytes. This message to Kafka is just an array of bytes. So it, Kafka doesn't need to know about the message and it does so. It doesn't care about this array of bytes it is sending from one place to another. It doesn't care about it. So this is the first thing about the message. Uh, in Kafka and the second thing I want to tell you is these messages are not sent one after the other so let's say this is one message you want to send this is another message you want to send this is another message you want to send so it won't be like this message would be sent and then it would be sent there and then Kafka will wait once it is sent then only it will send this particular message and once this is sent it will send this particular message it won't happen like that what instead happens is these messages are grouped together these messages are grouped together and are sent in batches. So they will, it will couple a group of matches, sorry, messages and it will form a batch. And this batch would be sent together. And before sending the batch, it would compress this particular batch. So it would make, it would compress it so that it can move through very quickly. So this gives Kafka an advantage being able to send a lot of messages at a particular amount of time. So it increases its throughput. But obviously, it comes at a cost of latency. But still, uh, this is a technique Kafka uses to increase its throughput. And this is one of the reasons why Kafka is so fast. So this is how messages are sent in Kafka. Let's uh, Next, let us talk about... Sorry. Uh, next, let us talk about uh, topics. Let me move it up. Yeah. So... Uh, this is a message queue. Now, let's say there are multiple microservices. This is microservice 1. This is microservice 2. And all of them would try to write a message in Kafka. And if all of them write in the same uh, particular topic, if all of them write their message as is, let's say it is a message of 1. And let me change its color to red. Yeah. Let's say this is a message of this particular microservice. Let me change this one also to red. So let's say this is sending a message and this one is also sending a message. So there 
if they are sending these micro services are sending messages as is it would be very difficult uh, for the consumer so the, there must be some logic on the consumer end consume by consumer i mean uh, for whom this message is intended so but let's say this micro service wants sends to wants to send a message to this particular service here so and this micro service to sends um, wants to send a message to this particular service here so if there is no distinct uh, if there is no distinguishing factor in this particular messages messages then this particular message would first come both of them would come to this consumer and both of them will come to this consumer but this is not right and there must be some logic on the consumer part so as to filter out these messages so this is not very optimal so instead what kafka does to solve this problem it it has queues uh, sorry i'm sorry it has uh, topics so topics are you can think of a topic as a message queue within a queue so uh, a topic is a place where a consumer write a message to and a sorry a producer writes a message to and a consumer listens to it so let's say this is your producer so it will if it will send a particular message to this particular topic and then its job is done it doesn't care about the message and if this is the consumer who wants to listen to the message and let so it would listen to this particular topic and and it will then receive this message from this topic so there would be another let me draw another topic also for clarity so there will be another topic or uh, t2 so this particular consumer would write this message to this particular topic and this particular sorry this particular produce and this particular producer would write this message to this particular topic and these two consumers will listen to it and while telling you about topics i have also told you about consumers and producers so what are consumers and producers they are nothing they are basically used for writing and listening to messages so this is a producer the purpose of a producer is to write a message to the to a particular topic and the purpose of a consumer is to listen to a particular topic so whenever any uh, message of interest come it can react to it or it can respond to it so so this this is what is a uh, producer and this is what is a consumer okay so the job of a uh, producer is not just only writing message to a topic it has a much larger role so to understand its second role let us first understand how this topic scales now one problem you can see is this particular uh, topic uh, if this particular topic is hosted on only one server and if the server crashes we lose all our data right so we need a mechanism uh, such that this data is stored somewhere i mean there cannot be a single point of failure let's say the queue goes down our entire system goes down so two things uh, kafka does to make sure that whenever it goes down the entire system doesn't goes down first thing it does is uh, it writes whatever messages comes to it into a particular database so kafka has its own uh database or own table where it writes where it keeps the logs of the messages so whenever a message comes to kafka it will first put an entry into this particular now into its, in, into its particular database that this message has come and it will return this particular message uh, in this particular topic for a certain amount of time okay now this can make you a little bit confusing as to how will a consumer then realize which message has come before the another so to take that into consideration what kafka does it creates offset so for every message that it sends it attaches an offset to it uh, and this is true for a topic so let's say this is message 1 let's say there is some message encoded in something what kafka will do it will attach an offset to it so this is the job of the this is the job of kafka so kafka will at the offset of 1 here yeah so this one is attached to it and let me make it bigger so that you can see yeah. so kafka will attach this offset 1 to this particular message it doesn't care what the message is but it will attach an offset to it and this offset would be decoupled from the message uh, yeah so it would be the, so let me do it in some other place yeah. so let me do it here yeah okay i am not able to draw but you get the my point so there will be an offset to a message and whenever a second message comes it will be the responsibility of kafka to mark an offset of 2 so whenever a message comes to into a queue the first job thing it does it sets an offset to it uh, 
once it sets an offset it writes this particular message in a particular you know in this particular database to retain it and then when and then and by writing i mean it makes a copy of it the message doesn't get stored in the database and then the consumer the message remains in the queue and then the consumer can read from the topic okay and these messages are written in the queue for some period of time which you can uh, fix yourself and this is called the retention period so retention period can be like seven days or when it exceeds the capacity of the database so similar limits you can set now another way kafka handles this problem of now uh, it not being a single point of failure is by uh, replication of topics in clusters so what do i mean by that so this is a topic so now we will understand topic into a little more detail so this is a topic now what does a topic consist of a topic consists of partitions so every topic so every topic will have multi multiple partitions so this should be this would be like partition 1 this should be partition 1 then there will be another partition partition 2 and there will be third partition partition 3 so every topic will have partition and uh, when i was saying that kafka writes a message to a topic what i meant was it writes a message to a partition in a topic okay and which uh, let's say it has three partitions and which partition it has it will write a topic that responsibility is not with kafka that responsibility is is with the is with the producer so it is the responsibility of the producer to write a to write a message in a particular topic so let me yeah so this is a producer and this is a message and it is the responsibility of the producer to send a message to a particular partition and which particular which partition it wants to send to uh it is the job of the producer to determine let me move it front out oh, and yeah so it is the job of this producer to determine which particular topic which particular partition in a topic it wants to send a message to so why are partitions important the reason partition is important is one it gives you scalability so you can have two partitions in one particular topic and you can have this, this you can have this third partition of a topic in a particular server so if a server goes down messaging still continues because there is a partition active and this consumer can start writing those messages to this particular to the third partition which is still like active okay now another interesting thing i want to tell you is whenever you write a message to a partition the the message gets appended at the end of the partition so it will get appended here and then the second message will get, get appended after it so everything is sequential in kafka so this i wanted to tell because little later i will tell you why kafka is so fast and this will come in handy okay so this was all about topic messages and offset i already told you what an offset is so every message has a particular number assigned to it and the next message would have an incremental number and an offset is unique for a particular partition in a topic so this you need to remember in a particular partition in a topic an offset is unique why how does it helps the consumer so let's say this is our consumer let us bring our consumer down and let us give it another color yeah let us give it this color so this is our consumer now let's say the consumer has to go down for some maintenance activity so the consumer now knows that it has for this particular partition p1 it has consumed message till 9086 offset so it can store this data that for this particular uh for this particular uh for this particular partition it has consumed data till 9016 it can store this data somewhere it can then go down and once it comes back it can then fetch this database and then start listening and then start picking up messages from the offset 9087 so by assigning offset and having this particular partition kafka gives you an ability for the consumer to go die and then come back and then again start as if nothing happened so this is by in this way you can realize how kafka by kaf you, you can try to appreciate the beauty of kafka basically this way of partitions this way of creating topics and this way of listening to offsets so this gives your architecture a very scalable uh, yeah this gives your architecture a very scalable things to outsource so if you have kafka as your message you don't need to care about anything because kafka does half of the job for you okay 
and now i wanted to tell you about one more thing so there uh, okay so one last thing i want to leave you with uh, is brokers so what are brokers so everything i told you that kafka does it is actually broker doing it on its behalf so broker is basically what is the job of the broker so the job of the broker whenever a message comes it assigns its an offset and then writes the message to this data writes the message to this database that this particular message has come and then it's assigned it's an offset so this is the job of a broker so everything i told you that kafka does essentially broker is doing it on its behalf so broker is like the engine that powers kafka so this is one thing i wanted to tell you because you will hear a lot about brokers but i won't go into depth as this will make this video uh, very long so now that we understand uh, the architecture of kafka and how it works let us try to understand why uh, it uh, came into the picture and what particular need of linkedin it solved so the guy you see on my right this person is the person who spearheaded the team within linkedin to create kafka now why did linkedin create kafka what was the problem they were facing so the problem they were facing was basically an activity tracking so when you like a message and by you i mean there is a lot of use so a lot of people likes their message and you need to give them recommendation instantaneously so previously whenever someone liked a message it will it would have emitted a blob of xml and this xml file needs to be formatted someone needs to consume and all those things and the particular services they found that dealt with consumes and and production of messages so that were not up to the mark so this is a use case why they needed kafka and which is why they went ahead and built one so this particular person jay he spearheaded the mission and now let us learn let us uh, think why do we need kafka so first problem it solves is it has multiple produce we can have multiple producers and consumers at will we can add as many producers as we want like i told you in the diagram a little while earlier we can here add as many consumers and producers as we want kafka doesn't cares you can have like multiple consumers multiple producers and that kafka does not care the second thing is it we have disk based retention so i told you we write a message in a disk so it prevents from kafka being a single point of failure whenever kafka goes down the messages are still stored in a disk so you can bring off kafka and then run these messages again second it is highly scalable and i will tell you uh, just now why is it so and then it is highly performant so let us now discuss why is kafka is so much scalable and highly performant compared to its other alternative so so let us understand what makes kafka so first and i think there are two reasons what makes kafka so first one is i have written them down here one is sequential disk access and the second one is zero copy so first let us understand sequential disk access so there are two ways to access data from a disk one is random so you can read data here and then you can read data from here then you can read data from here and then you can read data from here so this is random access but what sequential access is if you read data from here the next set of data you will read is this one and then the next set is this one so this is how sequential access works and you can see in sequential access since you move sequentially it prevents you a lot of time between hops in random access if you are reading a data here then you don't know where to go next and you and the next path may not be its neighbor so it saves you a lot of it, it uh, by doing sequential you it saves you a lot of jump since you know the next path to go and the next path is your neighbor it saves you a lot of jumps but it but you have to write data in a sequential ma- uh, in a sequential manner as well which kafka take care of how does it take care of it so whenever any blog is whenever any blog is added to it it is added in a sequential manner so this is overhead it has to take while writing but but this is but given this overhead in writing it gives it a massive boost while reading data while reading data kafka is extremely fast because everything is sequential so this is one of the reason why kafka is fast second reason it is fast is is it follows zero copy principle you can read it a little bit more in the internet and i have taken this slide from uh byte bytes go so what is zero copy so in zero copy first let us understand how a uh, data moves from disk to network so one of the job of kafka is to move data from one place to another in doing so it has to write, it has to write a lot of data between the network into the disk so uh, while doing so it follows the zero copy principle so this is our producer first it writes data into the application buffer then it writes data into the ram 
so this is again copied then it then the os syncs data periodically to the disk and then the disk loads data from the os step buffer and you can see there is a lot of pop and there is a lot of copying of data this is a messy path to follow because there is a lot of random copy we do not need we can eliminate that and that is exactly what kafka does so in kafka from writing a message from the disk to the consumer the only thing that is followed is this particular things this particular thing doesn't exist in, in case of kafka so here is the producer it will write data to the disk the disk will write to the os buffer and the os buffer will send data directly to the nic buffer so this is the only three stages that it go the data goes through and the and lot of unnecessary hops are uh, reduced so there is no redundant copying of data that we do not require and this is the second principle that kafka follows that makes it very very fast this is the zero copy principle so overall these are the two things which contributes to making kafka very fast yes uh, so let me tell you an interesting fact uh, and the people who are watching this video to this point uh, do write kafka in the comments so i know a number of people who are watching uh, so let me tell you why kafka was named kafka and this is the words of the creator of kafka jay whom i talked about a little while earlier so he said that since kafka was used for writing messages and why not name it after a famous writer so he named it after one of his favorite writers franz kafka and this is one of the famous quotes by franz kafka mm, so and in open source in case of open source soft systems the name kafka also sounded really good so this is why kafka was chosen there is not really a big correlation but yeah it was named after franz kafka it's a cool fact to know so now uh, we will get hands on with kafka now well, there, i have told you a lot of theories so now let's get hand on hands on so first thing you will need is docker desktop and the docker installed in your system if you do not know how to do that i have made a video last week last to last week and you can check out it was the second video in the same playlist which is mastering uh, docker using golang so that you can check out this video i have explained in depth about docker about container technologies about vms and all those things you can check them out it is a really good video and uh, next thing you will need so uh, once you install docker uh, this is done the next thing you will need is kdeck so what is kdeck kdeck is a ui tool that helps you connect to a kafka cluster for example we connect to postgres using pg admin or using a sql or using uh, we connect to mysql using some ui tool so it's a tool so from which you can see the number of topics in a kafka cluster the number of partitions the messages in it and all those things so it's a ui tool it is very helpful how do you install kdeck uh, you don't do much you just go to this site kdeck.com slash get kdeck and then you click on kdeck for desktop click on win download for windows mac or linux whichever one you are in i have my one in windows so i will click this windows but download this uh, click on this win button and it will download for me i have already downloaded so after downloading you need to go into you need to extract this folder and then click uh, once you extract the particular folder you need to hit kdeck.exe and it will basically open up this thing for you so this is how you install kdeck mm, once you have installed kdeck uh next thing uh, i want to tell you uh, for those of you who do not know how we are using how we are going to use kafka with docker and why we are not using the local way so you, you can use the local way but that will require some uh, dedicated uh, cpu support from your system and i am not sure all all cpus will be able to handle it so it is better to use it by a docker container is the kafka thing and we can interact in the same way so there's a lot of talk uh, so this is a this is the docker compose file we will be using to up the con of the kafka container and you will you are seeing you can see that i am using zookeeper before i am running kafka if you do not understand what is docker compose and all those things you can see my previous video so first let us understand a little bit about zookeeper so i already told you uh, what Uh, i already told you about broker so what is a broker broker is nothing but it is kind of the engine of kafka which uh, which whenever a message comes it sets it an offset and writes to the database and puts the message in the queue and all those things it does now since it is a very important part of kafka system it is distributed across multiple servers 
so we can have brokers spanning across three servers and when we have the same broker across three servers uh, we need to make sure that there are no duplicate rights or uh, the consumer is not seeing the same message twice so how do we do that so there are multiple ways to do it uh, one of the way of uh, maintaining quorum is via using leader election so what is leader election uh, so let's say this is not only true for uh, kafka brokers it is true for any system so what is leader election so basically if you if you have a distributed system where you you are using three entities of the same kind to maintain redundancy and to make sure that the event is fault tolerant the architecture is fault tolerant such that if any of the system goes down uh, one of them is up or if two of them go down one of them is is up so in such a case you need to maintain a consensus uh, or to know where in which place to write data to or who is the main server right so how do you do that so there are multiple uh, there are multiple ways one way is leader election so what leader election does is uh, let's say there are three such entities so one of them will be the, a leader at a particular point of time and all the request will come to it and rest of them will be passively involved in it they will not they will not be involved in uh, they will not be involved directly with the communication they will be just for application purposes and they will do nothing when one leader is active so initially when these containers come up all three of them there will be a leader election by it is very obvious what i mean so there will be an election one of them will be chosen as leader let's say this one and all the communication from a client will happen to will happen to this and the other two will just be will be just responsible for maintaining a you know, maintaining the data replication and all those things so that if this one goes down any between any of them one of them will become leader and it can continue as is so this is uh, what uh, leader election is and kafka uses this mechanism for uh, maintaining for making its broker highly scalable so it has brokers across three such servers and it maintains uh, replication and what not so and and this entire thing is outsourced to zookeeper so zookeeper does the leader election and handles the scalability of his brokers on the behalf of kafka which is why we need to install zookeeper so first thing we do install zookeeper once we pull down zookeeper we install kafka uh, so i am just not going through them it is like fairly simple i am just mentioning the port and tick time and and then i uh, in download kafka from this particular image and it depends on zookeeper running it on port 2992 you can see multiple environment variables for kafka as well but uh, like uh, those are important if you want to understand in depth we will see them later on like for this initial basic video i uh, if you if you do not understand in, them in detail it is okay you can just i uh, use my docker file i will upload it on github so once you have a docker file i need to uh, up this docker file so i will do docker compose up minus d so this is a docker compose file i'm sorry i am saying it a docker file why i am doing minus d is to run it in a detached mode so this is done network kafka golang default is created takes the name from here and when i go into my docker desktop so in this ui i can see kafka golang is created and zookeeper and kafka both of them are kind of running if i go inside kafka i can see logs are coming and so kafka is running nicely and if you go above somewhere here you can see about the leader election that took place and all those things you can go through it but now for our purposes we have both zookeeper and kafka running so kafka we have kafka running now we want to connect to this kafka server okay so i will go into ktek i will add uh, click on add a collection i will select apache kafka i will give the name kafka i have to uh, paste the broker so for pasting the brokers so this is the broker that we have given i will copy this i will paste it here i will click on create and the connection is created and i should have tested the connection but that is okay let me create on connect so yeah this one i have i have connected i have connected to this kafka cluster let me refresh it yeah now if i go into the connection info i can see the node id and all the connection details that we used let me go to the data catalog 
so i can see we can see that there are no topics created so far that is because we have not created any topic and what are topics i already explained to you topics are literally topics where uh, kafka will write a message to so let us first create a topic we can create it here kafka name of the topic test topic and let me leave partitions as one so i told you what are partitions are it is a topic has multiple partitions let, let us skip just one partition for the purposes of this demo uh, one partition uh, just one replication so the partition will be replicated once uh, i hope you understand and but that's it we can add other details but those are not required one partition one replication i think one is the minimum for replication so i will confirm yeah so this test topic is created if i go into this test topic you can see the zero records one partition and topic size is zero byte because like we have no messages into it i can go into browse data so this will you can see it is fetching messages from the topic <coughs> but currently there are no message here so you can see there are like no we cannot see any top message here and i can ingest new records here and do all those things but this will make up our like uh, data formatting so i will not do anything uh, now uh, so now that our uh, tools to view our kafka cluster and the messages in the class inside a kafka topic is ready our kafka containers up it is good time for us to create the golang integration hmm so now we will create a, a golang application that will that will connect to this kafka cluster that i showed you previously which is this one and our kafka is hopefully still running yeah it is still running so since uh, kafka is meant for distributed application we would need to application to demonstrate this so what i will do i will create a publisher application okay so i mean i am keeping the name simple for your you guys understanding so we'll create a publisher application and we'll create a consumer application so we'll create a publisher let me copy this stuff and we will also create a consumer yeah so what uh, it will do basically is and there will be our kafka queue and this is our kafka this is sorry this is kafka this is our publisher this is our consumer so all that this will do this basically it will create this publisher will create a message it will send to kafka will create a message and will send to a kafka topic and before sending a message first thing we need to do is we have to create a topic although i created a topic beforehand but we'll still see how we can create our topic using golang because creating it via the ui is not a good way so we'll create a topic we'll create a partition inside the topic uh, and then we'll send a message direct to the, to the topic and then once this is done uh, i will show you this particular message in the in this kdeq uh, you know, in this kdeq what is what was his name <laughs> in, the, in this kdeq cy and once i show you this did it open yeah once it is shown i will use this consumer to read uh, i will create, we will build this consumer application to read the message so first let's started with the building this publisher so in the same directory i'll create a um, sub directory called publisher okay so i created a file mm. Publisher. Okay. Uh, let me delete it. Sorry for this, guys. Publisher, and I will create a file named main dot go. Okay. So, so first thing I already told you, you have to uh, every go package has to be. started with uh, has to have this line in the start i told all these things in the first video only then i'll do cd into publisher i'll do an ls have main dot go cool now what i need to do i need to have a library that i will use to talk to this kafka cluster so there are multiple libraries out there but the one that i use is segment io um so i will not i use what i will use in this video is segment io this is a recording right so 
and why i will use segment io the reason they have written it in their uh, wiki as well so if we scroll down okay why it is notable to search but uh, okay let me google it there is somewhere written in their github why use segment io in the github only they have reason that there are three multi, uh, multiple libraries uh, segment io kafka GitHub. so the main there are two other particular libraries which we can use to interact to a kafka cluster but the reason why i am using segment io is because of uh, the reasons because of three reasons one of them yeah here they have written so first is there are three libraries one is sadama so sadama is very high level but uh, the apis they pro they provide uh, is uh, like not very good you cannot understand the documentation very nicely then there is confident kafka so this is a basically a wrapper around this particular library but uh, then again it has a dependency on a c library and it is much more low level instead sadama is be better and goka is not that much used so they have built this library because of the limitations of the previous two libraries and you can see like they have fair number of stars and uh, only last week only they have contributed to this github repo so now this is last week only they have contributed to the github repo so this is like good mm. uh, now let's get started with creating this particular publisher so we will create a folder called publisher so let me go cd okay i'm already in this publisher but yeah how i am already in the publisher i don't know so i am already in the publisher we need to create make a go mod in it uh yeah and this is the path i'll be using and i this is the way we initialize a group project if you do not know these things you can see my first video i've explained all these things in pretty detail uh this particular thing is created yeah go, go mode file is created and now we need to install this particular library uh segment io slash kafka.go so i'll copy this particular url and uh, i'll go to here and i'll do go mod no go get minus here yeah segment io slash get kafka.go so this will download this particular library so we'll give it some time to download Okay, while it downloads, let us create one more file. Let me call it main.go. Not sure why the download is taking so much time. And let us create package main. Yeah, so this is a syntax you have to follow for Go projects like creating a package main and all those things. Uh, and yeah, again, first video, if you do not know them. So, first thing we need to create is a entry point. So, our entry point will be the main function as usual and in the main function we will create brokers so what those brokers will be brokers will be a string of the connection url of the broker so ideally we should have done this using a env variable and read it from the env file but uh, for this demo purpose i think this is okay and this is not any way any username or password so our brokers are running at 2992 mm, you can check them here kafka is running at 2992 then once i have this broker i need to create a topic and the topic is test topic let us create name it uh, it's a good convention to make the name capitalized for every kafka topic and let me just print this particular no uh, no let me just print brokers and topics so the errors goes away and then yeah brokers we will take we will remove this later on and after i have i have given the name of the topic i need to uh, i need to make a function that creates a topic so let us go around creating a topic and this function will be internal to this module in fact we can do it in a separate file so let us create a new file topic.go and in this file i will write this function create topic what this function will do it will just create a topic for me and so that i can reference this in the main dot go and i will just call the create topic function here 
and yeah ideally i should pass the brokers and topic also so i'll change the signatures as well i think brokers i define yeah so let me change this make the signatures brokers is yeah string of topic and let us complete this function okay so mm, and i this function should also return error so i will give it an error once it returns an error i have to cast the error here and if the sorry if error is not equal to nil i will for the purpose i will just print the error and go ahead and instead you know what let me log the error i think there is a logger log dot beta yeah, this is better so log will give you a pretty formatting instead of the print fmt is not a good way to like yeah so why i don't know why is it giving undefined it is created here bro. okay it will give undefined i think until i complete the function so uh, um, copilot is giving me a suggestion of using sadama but we do not use Sa i will not use sadama here because of the reasons i already told you so first thing i need to do to create a topic is to again it has started giving some suggestions but i don't know what suggestion it is giving but oh, i will not accept the suggestions for now so first thing i need to do for creating a kafka topic is to create a connection so i will create a connection connection error and now i will do kafka yeah kafka dot yeah this is what i will do broker sub zero so this will create a kafka connection and if error not equal to nil i will log the error again and i will return the error yeah because i am logging it there there is no point logging it again and then i will defer the connection yes pretty much not sure i am getting this error here expected package yes, sorry i have to define the package main and segment type of yeah, that is the package that was imported and the error this error should go away, go away now uh, i will give it some time it will go away anyway so i have created a connection and once i have created a connection i need to create a controller so controller yeah put in it and again if error not equal to nil return Mm, error pretty pretty neat and then mm, i need to create and then i will have to create a topic but yeah hey uh so i turned off my camera because my laptop was setting down uh sorry for that so we have created a controller now you must be wondering like what is a controller right so you remember i told you uh this particular thing a little while back uh where explain to you about zookeeper so basically there uh, there are three brokers like if you have three brokers one of them has to be the leader the one that is the leader it is the controller it um, it does all the things that i explained like writing to the disk and then creating an offset so this is the let's say two is the uh, leader here so it will be the controller so this is what the controller is now since we are writing to a topic and the controller is the one that has the logic for controlling topic creation creating partitions and all those things so we need to create a connection to the controller as well so this is our controller now i will like create a controller connection and error and this should be yeah kafka dot dial but now i need to give it a so what does this uh, kafka dot dial i need to give it a string of the kind of protocol i am using and i need to give it a address so this controller dot address is not an address so we need to create an address so to create an address we'll use a uh, the network package so network dot adder and so if you click on this hover on this network dot address you will see that it takes basically two parameters one parameter is the host and the other parameter is the port yeah. so it, it takes a network address it takes a host and the port and converts it into a network address so let us uh, sorry not the network dot adder it doesn't does that it is i'm sorry it is join host and port uh, so this join host and port what it does is it takes a host and a port and it converts it into a host port form so like if you say local host and you give and you give 19 uh, local host 1990 so it will take local host and then port so i can go ahead and write here local host but uh, 
it is better to use because it may not be running on local host now so it is better to use the host that controller is running on so i will do controller dot host and here controller dot host and i will also have to give the port and i will do controller dot port but it takes a string so to convert anything into a string we do fmt dot sprint and this will convert it into a string so controller dot uh, port yeah so this should be good and just like that we have a connection to the controller okay once we have a connection to the controller we need to handle for errors if there is any error we just return the error now that we have a connection to the controller we uh, we need to make sure that this controller connection is open throughout what i mean by that is uh, since we have created a connection we need to close it also so uh, so let me explain this defer keyword so if i would have done if i would have done this same thing without this defer keyword this controller connection would be closed just now so what is the point of creating a connection if you have to close it just now there is no point right we need to do things with the connection so for that we use the defer keyword so what this defer does is it will close this it will execute this particular line of statement in this case closing this connection once this create topic uh, function is perishes so the last thing when the create topic uh, function is perished it is no longer no longer in the stack the last thing that will happen will be deferring this particular connection so until this particular function is in the call stack this thing will occur okay uh, another way would have been to make this line the last statement of the file but it would be an override to make it keep making it the last uh, now that i have taken care of creating the connection and all those things i can create a topic config so let me create a topic config so what is this topic config so i already told you right uh, for creating a kafka topic and we also show in the ui we have to mention three things one the name of the topic which should be the topic i have already taken from the previous uh, functions which is this test topic once i have this topic the next thing i would require is the number of partitions we also saw in the saw it in the ui and we know what is partitions and the last thing is the replication factor so number of partitions is one and the replication factor we will also create it as one once we have a top uh, topic created so this is the last thing we need to do kafka dot create topics controller connection and the topic configuration uh sorry it is giving the wrong suggestion so it would be controller connection dot we will use this controller connection to create a topic and it would be the topic config so if i hover onto this create topics you will see it creates a topic with the provided con configuration with item potent operational semant semantics what it means that if you have an existing topic and if you give the same configuration again uh, it will not create another topic with the same name or it will not create any issues it will just use the same topic so it is just create or get if it if you already have a topic uh, fair and good if you do not have a topic uh, then we will create it for you so this is a pretty pretty item potent functions so this is our creation topic uh, logic handled now we need to complete this particular function okay uh, so um, once this is done i will go ahead and write uh, we need to log that uh, a particular topic has been created so topic created successfully and is it giving me error That's the okay so i need to give it a that is in five log dot fatal uh tell in okay this the go logger function is not very good so we have to use fmt only so if time permits like i will show you some day how to create a better logger and we'll say topic created and we'll also say the topic name but uh, for this example this is one topic so let it be and this is when error is not equal to nil so once topic is created we need to uh, write to this topic so to write to this topic we need to create a writer so writer error equal to writer and error equal to kafka and this should be from kafka dot i hope it did not near 
kafka dot new writer mm. and it will take a kafka config uh in which we need to mention uh, which brokers we are writing to and which topic i am writing to and we need to also to i have also have to mention a balancer so i will do kafka dot write config and if i hover over it okay so brokers is brokers let me topic is topic and balancer is here will you we do not care about the balancer thing mm, why is it giving an error kafka dot new writer okay so this is a config and i am stupid to expect an error here so which is the error uh, now we will write this particular message into our uh, message queue so here we need to expect an error so error writer dot write message and what message we will write uh, let me first check what this function does so it takes in a context and it uh, takes in a array of messages uh, sorry it takes a message and it will write a batch of messages to the kafka topic that is configured to this writer and you can read the method documentation here but we know this is our topic so we need to have context so first i will create a context so context dot background would do context pass it on and i need to write a message so let me write a message kafka dot message yeah i think this should be good and then the message let me see what it takes it takes a lot of things but the thing we care about is takes a lot of things like topics but the thing we care about is just key and the topic so we'll the key and we'll write the topic so this is our message and yeah let me give the key as key if you remember i told you this key is kind of used in partitioning for now let's just give key we don't care much and let's give the value hello world only and if we will log the error and return that's it if not then i'll change this print line statement to successfully publish a message to this topic so that's all it takes to write a topic and now we will see it in action yeah so i came back to full screen again now we'll see it in action so like all go file to run this particular file we need to do go run dot this will run this particular application and if i go here here you will be able to see test topic now currently you saw test topic right and i'm refreshing the connection i hope the docker is up still your docker is still up which is good both of them are running let them run mm. Taking a little bit more time to run. Not sure. Let Kafka update method and the timestamp is 2:44, which is current timestamp only. Yeah, successfully. And it says successfully published message to a topic. So if I go here, not sure why is it taking so much time. So I'll just rephrase it. So if you see test topic, uh, the name we gave here was example topic. So if I rephrase it, yeah. So this test topic name appears, and if I go into the test topic, and if I go to browse data, so you will see the message that we have written. The message is with the key A, and the value is hello world. So in this video, we have created a publisher which we talked about, like creating a publisher, and the publisher has written a message hello world with the key key A, and it has written to a particular topic, the topic being test topic, which you could see here, and. i can see from all partitions but let me filter partition 0 only because there is only one partition here so you will see in partition 0 it has written this particular topic and our next part would be to create this consumer which would consume this particular message so this is the last part of the video where i will discuss the last topic that is remaining which is this part from the topic the message is consumed by the consumer so creating the consumer and consuming the message is the only part left which i will do now 
and so this is a consumer group so a consumer group is nothing but a collection of consumers so why do we need a consumer groups uh, and the consumer always work in a consumer group only so to create a consumer you have to create a consumer group even if it is of one so let's say you have two consumers so the first consumer can listen to partition one the second consumer then can listen to partition two and it can also listen to partition 3. In this way, you are seeing that we are kind of load balancing this traffic between two particular consumers. And when you, when the producer is writing a message to a particular partition within a topic, and the, um, the, this number of messages, one thing it is load balanced and you can also write it in a such a way that uh, it goes to a particular partition within a topic uh, that goes to a particular region. For example, these two partitions can pertain to the regions in India and this partition can pertain to a region in US. So ideally we can have a consumer that is in India which listen to these two partitions. So in this way we can do consumer and consumer group and it helps in load balancing and partitioning and all those things. So let us now create a consumer. I just wanted to tell you this thing because we'll have to create a consumer group now. Now I realized that the code for the consumer is almost the same as the publisher. So I have done a lot of things before. So before doing that, what I did was I went to this consumer, I went to this main.consumer, I created another value hello world to with the same key key and I ran this particular uh, run this particular publisher again so it published another message hello world to with the key so if i go here and i do a uh, refresh i don't think it will yeah this refreshes this one as well so yeah now you can see that there are two messages hello world and hello world two and i realized that the code is similar to publisher so i've already created a consumer so if i go if you go into the consumer I can read this code and you will understand. Just create another folder, go mode in it, and the same things for publisher you need to do again. So, first thing you need to do is give the broker, obviously. Then you need to specify the topic which I told and the group ID. Group ID is the consumer group ID which I explained, like this one, this group ID. Which group ID does this consumer belong to? So, you have to mention a group ID. Then I create a context and then uh, in case of publisher we saw we need to create a write now we need to create a writer to write messages the purpose of consumer is to read message so we create a reader we read from the we read from this particular broker uh, in this topic and we I also mentioned the reader for this particular group ID and this is the minimum bytes uh, batch size data that this consumer will accept uh, this uh, is just to make sure that we do not send a lot of data together and the consumer never crashes so these are for safety reasons. So I have uh, mentioned minimum, made it minimum as 10 KB and maximum as 10 KB, 10 MB. And then we kind of defer close the reader. Uh, similarly, similar to as we are defer closing both the defer closing the topics in the writer. So same thing here. Uh, now we'll start reading the message. Now see, this is an infinite for loop. Why do we need an infinite for loop? So the consumer needs to be act active and up always a publisher can publish a message at any point in time the consumer should be ready at every moment to consume that message which is why i have created an infinite for loop here so as long as the server is up this consumer will be up and what it does it basically the reader reads the messages from the you know, from the configuration i gave so this is with this configuration it starts reading the messages and you can see what this function does it basically reads and it re uh, returns the next message from the reader uh, so and then uh, i am kind of printing the message offset because i told you what offset are like uh, I told you here, I think I have lost track of it, but I have told you what offset is and why is it important. Like the consumer can die and it can come back. And if it remembers the, what, what was the last offset message it has consumed, uh, it can then move on to the next one. So that is what offset was. And then I am also printing the key of the message and the value of the message. And I am just simulating for a second to, uh, because I will run this publisher again and that time you will be able to see uh, why like we will be able to see this significant delay it won't be sim simultaneous just to for visualization purposes only we can also remove this one if we want so let us remove this one only okay so this is the publisher and in another terminal i have the consumer so this is the consumer so i will run this consumer and what i expect is 
first it will start consuming and then it will show me message at offset mm, key a key a message message at offset which we will see what is the offset kafka is setting here it is not showing the offset to us and key a hello world and hello world 2 which is what we expect to see mm, so consumer is running i will give it some time to run yeah it has started consuming and now the infinite for loop should start ideally these things are pretty fast mm, yeah, i'm recording okay start consuming it has started consuming give it some time it, the message will come up i think the message is still there let me refresh it yeah in now yeah now it is now it has started showing the offset here also so offset 0 offset 1 and if I go back to my terminal okay while it starts let me write another message here so let me go to the publisher and let me do a hello world 3 and let me write to the same key and I will do go run dot so it will publish this particular message hello world 3 in the same queue so let just give it some time to run so topic is created topic was already created but it will still say topic created and it has successfully published the message let us go to the consumer see now at offset 2 key a equal to hello world 3 has come and the reason uh, we cannot see this and the reason you cannot see these two messages is because i have already like before making this video i was like i uh, testing with the code so i have already like consumed this particular messages so you don't get to see this particular um, these two messages now and the uh, consumer it is a part of the consumer to remember the last message it has consumed so it like i said so next time it turns on uh it starts consuming from the second one so now if i go into the publisher and if i do uh, hello world 4 and if i just run it again so in the consumer now you will see that hello world 4 will start appearing as soon as the publisher publishes so if i go here let us yeah it is still running okay topic created yeah and now anytime soon yes so message at offset 3 hello world 3 so here nice you can see that we are able to we have created all this architecture right talked about topic partition offset consumer group consumers and we are able to write a message from a topic and consume it using a consumer in a consumer group so i have already talked about what are the advantages of doing it in this way we can have multiple uh, web services so yeah this is it for the video i think this was a long video but we learned a lot here about creating uh, brokers cuff bookers and all those things so hope you like it thank you good night